Hi guys, I'm Daini. I'm a first year reading Oriental Studies, Arabic and Islamic Studies at St. John's College. So my course is very language based. Um, we focus mostly on modern standard Arabic, both written and spoken. But however, we also have core modules in literature, religion and history. So every day I actually have two hours of Arabic. Um, I go to the faculty every morning and I have two lectures a week. So in first term I had uh, lectures in medieval history, Islamic art and Islamic thought. And the second term I had lectures in um, Iranian history, Ottoman history and literature as well. So I have tutorials as well um, after my essays. So each term I get set four essays in weeks three and four and seven and eight. I chose John specifically because it was one of the few colleges which actually offered Oriental Studies but also Arabic and Oriental Studies. Um, I also chose uh, John's because of its location. It is fairly central, um, Tesco's is about 3 minutes away and my um, faculty um, is also about 3 minute walk on the other direction which is across St. Giles which is really handy because I have classes at my faculty every day. Um, I also chose because John's is one of the richer colleges and so it offers quite a lot of grants as well as cheaper accommodation and food prices in hall as well. I had to sit the OLAT which stands for Oriental Languages Aptitude Test and this is required if you're applying for any Middle Eastern language. Um, this is a 30 minute test, basically from what I gauge is that it's trying to see how well you can grasp a learning a new language and understand um, how a language works. So um, the way the test is laid out is that it's, uh, it gives you a list of sentences in this language that Oxford made up and they give you translations on the side. So what you have to do is to kind of really understand how the language works and um, translate from the language into um, English and from English into that specific language and so a tip would be that you definitely will need to familiar yourself with grammatical concepts for example um, knowing what noun cases are like nominative, accusative, genitive as well as verb tenses will help as well. Um, another tip would definitely be try out practice linguistic olympiads you can find out um, past papers online as well. Um, and as with any other admissions test, definitely look through all the past papers, do as many as you can and sit them under the time conditions. Um, I felt that they were quite hard, um, but also very intellectually stimulating. Um, I had two um, interviews, one in college and one at my faculty. So my college interview was quite... Um, uh, they gave quite a lot of open-ended, broad questions. They weren't really kind of Arabic specific related questions. Um, for example, um, in my personal statement, I mentioned that I really enjoyed history, the history aspect of the course. So my tutor asked me um, questions like, to what extent do you think history repeats itself? And other broad languages on religion and literature. For my second interview, which was my interview at faculty, I was given a text to read, I think about 15 or 20 minutes just before they called me in. Um, and most of the interview was centered around what I thought about the text. Um, there were also guiding questions at the bottom which they asked me about it in the interview. Um, it was also quite a bit on how I would learn a language, um, like do I find learning languages hard? Like, what are the difficulties? What do you find easy about learning a language? Um, this is really important because the language courses or like the Oriental Studies courses in Oxford are very language based. So they really want to see, as uh, shown in the Ola, that you can learn new language really quickly because the language courses here for Oriental Studies are taught from scratch. So. Um, uh, you don't need to know Arabic or Turkish or Persian or Chinese or Japanese from before but they want to see that you're able to kind of pick up new languages really quickly. I chose Oxford over Cambridge mostly due to the differences in course and in the admissions test. So I think definitely for a lot of you, um, Oxford and Cambridge, between deciding between the two can be quite difficult but for me the course was quite important because I preferred the modules um, that Oxford offered much more than Cambridge. 
so I thought that that would suit me much more especially like tailoring my personal statement to my interests as well um, I also chose Oxford um, because of its admissions test so I'm not sure about other subjects but for my subject at least the admissions test was quite different because in Cambridge it was more of a um, reading comprehension and an essay based test whereas in Oxford as I mentioned earlier was the OLAT um, the aptitude test and I felt that it played to my strengths much more which made that um, I had a much stronger application so as you all know, this small group tutorial system is quite a niche teaching style um, for Oxbridge. So basically, for my course, it's um, usually held after my essays are submitted for that week. And so in it, we discuss the topic or module that we've learned for that week or for that um, how many couple of weeks um, with your tutor. Um, as well as usually another person or two other people in your tutorial. So we read out like each other's essays, we debate about the ideas, um, we get feedback on it as well. Um, and I think an advantage of the system definitely is like getting to talk and debate and like bounce of ideas with your classmates but also with a world-renowned expert on that subject, which I think is really amazing. Um, a disadvantage of it would be, well, I don't think it's that much of a disadvantage, but rather it can be a new, obviously it, it is a new system or new teaching style to a lot of you. So for me, I found it personally quite hard to adapt to this new teaching style. Uh, because coming from school, I was someone who was very quiet in class, although I was very good at written work. So definitely coming to Oxford and, you know, having to kind of be very proactive, answering questions left, right and centre was something new to me. So for me, in first term, I was involved in the Trinity College Orchestra, as well as college rowing at John's. Um, I also involved myself in Common Ground, which is a movement seeking to examine like, Oxford's colonial past. Um, in second term, I also involved myself with some extra classes um, held by the Islamic Society here. And also, I also got involved with the Malaysian Society Committee as well. For me, being a Muslim student, um, and it's not just me, but also other Muslim students and people who don't drink, um, we obviously were quite worried about not fitting in, especially during Freshers' Week, because um, the student culture in the UK is very much, I mean, not all, but like, it is very centered on kind of clubbing and drinking and everything. But um, Oxford is a very diverse place, and they definitely offer like non-alcoholic events during Freshers' Week that obviously I went to. Um, but however, like, it's I think it's very important to find a group of friends who like acknowledge your lifestyle and um, are you know wary of your beliefs, so they don't like pressure you into drinking or anything which I find it's really necessary because especially um, Oxford being um, very academic, like it can be a very difficult time and place for a lot of people. So I think finding your really good group of friends is necessary. My favourite library is the St John's uh, Library and Study Centre because it is very near to my room and it's a very good alternative to working in my room because I personally can't really work in my room because I get quite distracted. So it is a very good, um, new, modern and very well lit library, which I feel is essential to not accidentally falling asleep um, while doing your readings. <laughs> so a college family is a welfare supported system, um, which basically every, pretty much all colleges have it. So after you've gotten your results on A-levels, IB, um, usually actually after A-levels, after everyone basically has confirmed their places, you will receive an email from your college parents, um, whom one of them would at least be um, studying the subject that, you're, that you will be studying. So you'll receive like an email from them saying like introducing, them, introducing themselves, um, you know, offering like any help that you might need from them, anything about you know settling about into Oxford. So by the time you come into Freshers, and I think it's a tradition that by the end of Freshers week, you would have a meal with your college family. So I was very fortunate to have a very supportive college family. Uh, my mom uh, studies Arabic and Persian and my college dad studies Chinese. Um, I also have a college brother which, um, whom I'm fairly close to, 
who studies Chinese and they've been such an amazing welfare support system.